Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to take a look at a wonderful new capability for Manifold Server, and that's to run Manifold Server as a service. Uh, and that's a lot more convenient than running it from a command prompt. And uh, so I'm going to teach you how to do uh, all that. And we're, we're looking at an installation here. This particular, this is a portable installation for Manifold System Release 9. And I'm going to launch uh, Manifold uh, with administrator rights. So uh, we want to do that when configuring uh, the system for running on a server. So I'm going to right click here in Manifold.exe. I'm going to choose Run as Administrator. And that's going to launch uh, off screen here. It's the user account control. Do I want to accept that? Yeah, sure. And uh, launches Manifold. Off screen, I'm going to bring it here and resize the, uh, the Manifold screen so that it fills the, uh, the video frame. Great. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my Manifold license is installed for all users on the computer. Uh, when you install manifold, a Manifold license by default, it's just installed for a one user at a time, and you can add other users. It's no big deal. It doesn't use up any more activations. Uh, but uh, I'd like to install it for all users so that it'll automatically run for the uh, uh, for all services that are that are running that it may that it, that the system may that Windows may be using. And you can see right here it says license for all users not installed. So we're going to fix that. We're going to install it for all users. And the way we do that, we're, we're going to click on this button here, install, and. Uh, there, it's installed for all users. It's that quick uh, to do. It's that easy. It doesn't use any more act activations. And now Manifold is ready to go <coughs> to uh, you know, be, be used to, to run as a service, including Manifold Server. Um, click OK. And now it's configured. Since we're, we're, we're already in administrator mode, we can configure server. We can launch server. To do that, I'm going to use the new Manage Services dialog. Click Tools. And then here under Manage Services, click Manage Services. And that's the Manage Services dialog. So what I want to do is I want to start a, a new server instance. And the way I to do that, I'm going to click the Add button. And I'm going to give this uh, server a name. Let's call it uh, Server Boston, because it's, it's going to serve areas in Boston. And uh, the uh, data file that I'm going to use, I can uh, browse here to browse. Uh, and uh, this is here in a, in a data uh, folder that I have off my C uh, disk driver. I have a lot of data for a lot of uh, different projects. And I'm going to click this uh, Boston OSM map. That's a bunch of areas for all of Boston taken from OpenStreetMap. Click Open. And so this Manifold Server instance is going to be called Server Boston, and it's going to serve data from this Boston OSM map. The address here is the primary address for the uh, IP address for the uh, uh, Ethernet port that's on this computer, on the server machine. And it starts with port 9099 by default. If we were to add additional services once we create the service, it will automatically increment this port for the next port being 9100, because you can add multiple server instances at a time. Now, the start option here, there's three choices for start. There's auto, disabled, and manual. Uh, that says how to start the service. And this is a Windows service we're talking about for when the computer system is rebooted. And what this means is that when the computer system is rebooted, you know, uh, and, and, and the system is started, this server uh, instance will automatically run as a service. It'll start as a server, as a service. If I set that to disabled, well, it wouldn't start as a, it'd be set up as a service, but it wouldn't start. And if I set it to manual, if the system were to reboot, say because of a power uh, cycle or something like that, uh, it wouldn't automatically launch. We'd have to run this, launch this dialog and uh, <coughs> launch it as a server. And here there are other options that I can add, which are the usual command line options that uh, work with Manifold Server. Uh, for example, whether I want to use a log, require a login or a password and that sort of thing. I'm not going to bother with any of that. I'm just going to click OK. So I've just created a server uh, instance. Uh, and uh, for now, uh, because uh, we haven't rebooted the system, it's stopped. In order to run it, I control click this. This works the same as grid dialogs uh, throughout Manifold. You can control click something to highlight it. And that turns on these toolbar buttons. Control click to unhighlight it. Control click to highlight it. And so now I'm going to click this start button, the run button. Uh, so it's now running. And if I want, I can refresh it. And what this is telling me, this is telling the name of the server instance, the uh, data that it's, that it's using, the uh, IP address and the port that it's using, the startup status, whether it's auto or uh, uh, disabled or uh, manual. And uh, here, whether it's uh, running, started, or, or stopped. Uh, and uh, this is the process ID. Now, why have a services dialog? Because a services dialog is a lot easier to work with when you're managing services uh, and you know the, the particulars about a service, uh, then uh, uh, and I can control click this undelete it to un unpick it. 
uh, than uh, using Windows Services dialogs. Windows Services dialogs can be you know, pretty com complicated because they're set up to handle all different kinds of services. This Managed Services tool uh, is built into Manifold, and uh, anybody who's an administrator can run it. Uh, anybody who's not an administrator can see this, but they can't change anything in it. If you want to change some of this stuff in here, we can double-click it. So, for example, if you want to change the start status of something else from auto, we can do that. Uh, if you want to change the port or something like that, then we have to stop the service first and then change it. Uh, I'll click Cancel to not change this. So now we have server running. And now, uh, as, as an instance on this particular computer, and it's a, this particular IP address, and let me select that IP address, Control-C to copy it. Uh, and uh, so that uh, from here on in, even if this, uh, if I log out, uh, the service will still be will still be running. If uh, we shut the computer down and start it up again, the service will automatically start back up. So now it's uh, either from this manifold instance or from a different manifold instance, which I've launched. This could be a user manifold instance. And uh, let's uh, size this one so it covers up the uh, fills the whole frame. Let's. Uh, Let's create a server instance. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click, choose View, or choose Create, right click here and choose Create, New Data Source, More. And uh, let's call this, uh, what's the Boston? For the data source type, uh, pick out what you want. This could be a, you know, any of the data manifold servers, of course, a database. So it's up here with all Oracle and Postgres and MySQL and all the rest. And the source for this is going to be. Uh, Control V. I remembered the IP address, and I don't really have to put the port in because 9099 is the default port. Uh, but I'll put it in anyway, uh, so you can see how that works. And I'll test that. Okay, connection is established, so we know that the server is working. Click OK, and all this is great. Click data source. Super. And we've just created this uh, data source, which is coming from the server. And uh, that's the data source. It's just as if we're working with the map file directly. So we can double click map, and it fills right in. You can see server is amazingly quick. This is uh, all the uh, different uh, objects which are uh, areas which are on the open street map for uh, Boston. So uh, here's a Boston Common. This is, uh, this is uh, Beacon Hill up here. This is Back Bay and Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, Newbury Street, very trendy uh, street for shopping and dining. And uh, all that other good stuff uh, in, in the Boston area. And uh, why is server so fast? Because uh, the rendering is actually happening on the server. So uh, it doesn't have to, th you know, throw a whole lot of data at you to, to do that. Uh, we, can, we could add additional uh, instances to server, uh, you know, using that uh, server dialog, for example. Uh, well, let's add, a, uh, add another instance. I'm going to move this out of the way and come back here. This is my admin session. Let's manage services. And uh, let's add another one. And let's call this uh, server. LA and notice how the port is automatically incremented and this one uh, let's uh, go back here to uh, my data collection here and down here where did I see some, uh, Los Angeles County here you go these are all the parcels in uh, Los Angeles County so that looks pretty good that's okay and uh, that's also starting auto there we go and you can see this uh, new server here is a uh, server instance is stopped I'm going to control click that to select it and I'm going to start it up. Uh, like I say, because it's, it's set to auto start, if the system were rebooted, it would automatically start up as a service. And uh, I can f refresh to see what the process ID was that's assigned to it. And I can leave this uh, going if I want, or I can shut this uh, dialog up. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's come back here, bring this project back uh, as if this is another user on a different computer, right? Let's pretend that it is. And uh, let's create a, another uh, server data source. Click Okay, let's go. I'll start cl from clicking up here so you can see, see where I'm clicking. Let's try that again. New data source and click more. And uh, let's call this uh, LA Parcels. LA for Los Angeles. Spell that right. And uh, let's see, that's uh, 192.168.2.44. And what was that a port number we used for that? It was uh, 9100. There we go. Let's test that. Connection established. Okay, so we know that's uh, that's live. Click Create Data Source, and here's uh, LA Parcels. And uh, let's click open that map. And these are all the parcels that are in Los Angeles County. So that's a lot of them. And uh, I guess down here is uh, Santa Monica. And. Uh,
you can all click that and you can see what the uh, parcel is in the map and let's zoom in here even further let's see if we have any live data here yep there you go see these are all the different parcel names and you know all the other valuations and stuff like that so uh, we're working with this uh, zoom to fit uh, you can see these are really really big parcels big data sets and they're just being served absolutely instantly uh, now it's true uh, you know we're all here on the same machine because uh, I'm uh, looping back to the same machine uh, where server is running but even if it's running over over the network it would still be uh, that incredibly fast so I hope you've seen this uh, you like this uh, quick demo how this uh, how this stuff works how quick it is and easy it is to use this uh, dialog the managed services dialog to start and stop if I want to stop a, a service let's uh, click Boston which one should oh we can we can start start and stop both of them everything's selected for example now we can click stop and that'll stop all the selected services or we can just do this one here and that'll just stop that selected service so, so you can see, see it's stopping and now it's refresh and now it's, and now it's stopped let's start let's run it again and uh, it's that easy to do. It's a, this is a whole lot easier than using a Windows uh, dialogs to manage the services, and uh, you can have as many of these services as you want, you know, because uh, uh, all of them running off of a different port, so you can connect to the different ports. You know, you can tell uh, you know your users, you know, who are uh, connecting to various Manifold projects to different ports. Notice that these are read-only. You know, so uh, uh, that's of course what what, what server does. Server a server is a display uh, technology. Uh, so that's that. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends and uh, uh, give a server a try. It's a server built into uh, uh, every uh, Universal Edition version, uh, so you can uh, yeah you know run server. It's uh, perfectly adequate for uh, you know teams and uh, personal use and stuff like that. It's an, it's, an, it's an extremely convenient way of serving uh, well terabytes if not petabytes of data because you can you know you can cascade uh, nest uh, projects within projects. So anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.